One of my favorite things about an off-road buggy is the ability to have front and rear steer. And on this Tech Tuesday, we're gonna teach you all about our rear steer kits. So what is rear steer? Uh, it's basically exactly how it sounds. You have the ability to actually steer the rear of the buggy using this joystick that's in your right hand whenever you're driving. And it's really cool for technical trails and stuff like that because it increases the maneuverability of the vehicle more than you can possibly imagine. Rear steer is an amazing thing to have in your vehicle. It's, it's another tool that you can have into your bag, if you will. It allows you to pick different lines. It allows you to get set up on lines a lot faster if you've got a long wheelbase vehicle. It helps you to be able to maneuver in and out of trails a lot better. It helps you crawl and you can actually get your tires in the perfect spot to crawl over those big obstacles. And let's face it, it's cool. These kits are intended for guys that are mud racing, whether you're hill climb racing, just trail riding, or just extremely technical rock crawling as well. Tell us about the couple different versions and, and why you maybe want one or the other. Right, so we've got the electric over hydraulic version. It's got the built-in pump and the reservoir here with the solenoids all integrated into one unit. And then we've got just the regular self-centering kit that's intended to be run with an engine-driven power steering pump. Okay, so why would you maybe want the electric one over the, the engine-driven one or the engine-driven one over the electric one? All right, so the, so the electric over hydraulic is gonna be your easiest installation. Uh, it's completely independent of the engine's power steering system, so your front steering is completely independent. You can basically install the electric over hydraulic motor and pump, uh, the sensor housing and everything, and leave the front steering alone. Um, now the guys, these um, high flow hydraulic based pumps are a, a lot more popular these days, and that's going to be a great fit for the you know engine driven pump style. Uh, those pumps have a lot more gallons per minute than you know, just your regular engine driven pumps. So they're capable of running both steering axles at one time. Gotcha. Uh, so if you're gonna try to run, you know, this kit with like a regular CBR TCP pump, it's really gonna suffer that pump. You're not gonna be able to run both at one time. And you know, that's probably what a lot of guys are gonna wanna do. Yeah, exactly. I see guys all the time that have just a single engine driven pump and they can either turn the front or the rear which is really cool about the electric over hydraulic is they're completely independent at all times. You have 100% steering in the front and 100% steering in the rear. Plus, if your engine dies, the electric over hydraulic still works and you still have steering. Right. So I'm gonna buy this kit for my buggy and I'm wondering what all comes in the box. Gotcha. Well, the biggest thing is the electric over hydraulic unit. This is all integrated, the motor, the solenoids, and the reservoir. This is the custom control cable that connects to the sensor log. The, this is the end that connects to the shuttle inside the sensor log. This is the end that goes on over to your high steer arm. The sensor log that's made here at Busted Knuckle Off-Road. We've got our sensors for the self-centering part. They screw right into the sensor housing. We've got our instruction sheet, which you can find inside the electronic box. And this snazzy harness that we have made here, extremely professional. And the connectors for the sensors are built in to the harness when you receive it. You've also got the handle that comes with the kit, machined here at Busted Knuckle Off-Road with the control switches. If you buy the regular self-centering kit versus the electric over hydraulic kit that utilizes an engine driven pump, you would in turn get this hydraulic solenoid block here and you would also get this block right here that's for plumbing, it's a manifold, and then you would get some instructions that come with it that show you how to actually plumb it. Jake, how do we plumb this thing now that we got it at home? Well, the electric over hydraulic kit is super easy. Uh, you're gonna basically take this hose port right here and go to one side of your hydraulic ram, and this hose port right here and go to the other side of your hydraulic ram. It's dash six AN, and it does not matter which one you plumb to which side of the ram, and we'll go over why here in just a minute. Now the plumbing for the engine driven pump setup is a little more complicated, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So basically if you look at this block, um, it's gonna have this uh, solenoid thing sitting on top of it, but you can look on the sides and you can see that each one of these ports is labeled with a letter, okay? A and B go to the ram. Again, it doesn't matter which one goes where. Uh, your P is gonna be the pressure coming into the side of the block and your T is gonna be for tank or reservoir. Now these are actually a uh, number eight O-ring boss fitting. All right, so I got my kit and I'm trying to figure out how to wire it. Obviously we have instructions, but let's show them how to put it together. All right. 
So we'll start with wiring up the, the solenoids. These are gonna be your right and left controls and that is why it doesn't matter which one of these you hook up to, to steer your cylinder right or left. The, both of these, all four of these wires are the same color. You need to hook two of them to hot and two of them to ground. There's a handy spot on the side of the pump here you can ground these wires to. You can also ground them to the top, whichever, whichever really works better for you. Now you'll take the two of these yellow wires that you've chosen for your hots and wire them to these two wires in the control harness. It'll be the uh, pink and it'll also be the purple. And if you get confused, again, we include the instructions inside of the electronic solenoid. Right. So what do we do with this orange wire right here? So the orange wire triggers the solenoid for the motor on the okay. pump. Right. Okay. That tells it to turn on when you're commanding it with the thumb button. Gotcha. Yep. So this tells the pump to turn on, right. and then this is gonna tell one of the solenoids to open to allow the fluid to go to the rear axle. Right. Okay. Now, well, that's pretty easy. If you, if you have the button operating the opposite way of what you think you want at the time, just switch it with these two wires. Okay. Yep. Yep. I've seen that happen before, and I also, um, I've seen guys actually take the wires off their joystick and flip those the opposite way, and it does the same thing. Right. So I've got a couple extra wires over here. I got a red and a black, and then I've got this pigtail. Where does that stuff go? All right, so this is this is supplying power and ground to the unit to the control box itself. Okay. That's what's going to use to energize the solenoids here. Okay. Yeah. You can put a switch on this if you want to arm and disarm the system. Okay. If you want to, you know, a lot of guys like to have shutoffs in this system. Absolutely. Yep. And then this right here, that right. just goes to our joystick, right? That goes to the joystick, and okay. you also have the option to use that with the crawl mode switch. We've got a whole bunch of really cool stuff that you can do with this joystick. You know, I'm an off-roader, I'm a racer myself, so I wanted to make sure that this thing was intuitive for people to use. So what I designed was that you have a left, and your tires will go whichever direction you want. You've got your right, they go whichever way you want. And if you want to stop the tires from moving and like hold a position, you can pull this trigger and it stops it from self-centering. But anytime you let go of the joystick, it automatically goes back to center. And it's perfect for the guy who wants to go fast and be maneuverable through the woods because you can go left or right, pull the trigger, rear tire stay there, let off, and it'll go right back to straight. But for all the crawler guys, you know, we wanted to be able to provide a full manual style system, if you will. And we have what's called the crawl harness. And all you have to do is just unplug this joystick from the harness and simply plug in the crawl harness. It just snaps in right there, snaps in right there, all waterproof, nice Deutsch connectors. And now you can toggle between two modes of the rear steer. And that is a fully manual mode where when you go left and you go right, the tires stay there. And then you can go back to party mode, which means that it's gonna self-center anytime your hand's not on the joystick. So I've got this thing inside my buggy and I'm trying to figure out like, you know, what I need to do for power cables, like your heavy gauge wire. Right. So you're gonna bring in a heavy gauge wire to the solenoid here. That's gonna operate the pump motor and you're gonna bring a heavy gauge ground here. Now you're gonna to need to size your wire according to the, to the length of the run back to your battery. Now both of these items are gonna be needed to mount it firmly to the buggy, right? Right, so uh, you know, We've got this really nice control box right here, and you're gonna to wanna to mount this thing so that it's not cutting the wires on the backhand side. It's designed to be mounted onto a panel. And basically what we normally do is we just come in here and we'll set this down on a panel, we'll trace around the outside, and then cut our hole a little bit smaller so that it basically goes around, just around this section right here, and, uh, and it doesn't hit the wires and make sure it's not chafing the wires whenever it's mounted. But it's, it's designed to be mounted just kind of on a flat panel like this. You can literally mount it anywhere as long as your wires are long enough. You could go up underneath the buggy's dashboard, underneath the seats where we put them on our buggies, but you can pretty much mount it everywhere. I definitely suggest using this little guy uh, to go under here and then put the bolt through. Uh, and that'll just basically keep the cap from getting lost. If you happen to be off-roading and open up the cap for some reason, it's not gonna be lost. Uh, for the joystick itself, uh, we've threaded this half 20 and it works really well just to have a threaded rod with two jam nuts. Uh, you can weld it to the chassis. You could weld a bolt to the chassis. We've seen guys come up and put a bolt and then press break some metal. Really, you can do whatever you want to with this, but it is a half 20 and you want to make it really solid on the vehicle. Um, that way, you, whenever you're off-roading and you hit something hard, you know, you're not flopping all over the place trying to grab this thing. We've even seen guys mount them on the shifters. Uh, we've had guys actually mount them on the shifter so you can actually shift and, and do your rear steer at the same time. But, you know, half 20 on the bottom and just make sure it's nice and uh, secure to the vehicle. So I've got all the wiring installed in my buggy. I've got my control box mounted firmly. I've got my joystick mounted firmly. Uh, but man, this thing right here, it scares me. How am I supposed to put this in? All right. Well, 
We designed the sensor log to be very user friendly and versatile. Uh, you can mount it with uh, the three quarter 20 holes that we've drilled and tapped in the back. This thing is 304 stainless, so you can weld tabs to it if you want to. You can mount it with clamps if you like that. Uh, you can bolt a tab to it. You know, it, it, it's really versatile unit. Okay. Uh, the next thing you want to do is connect the cable to the shuttle inside of the, the sensor log here. Okay. Unscrew the cap that's threaded. Okay. The cap is going to thread up on... Just straight up on there like that? Yep. Okay, perfect. Yep. And inside is the shuttle for the sensor log, which is going to thread right up on the end of the cable. Okay. Yep. And then once that's done and you've got that thing threaded all the way in, uh, I guess I'm just supposed to slide this thing inside here and then tighten up this whole top piece, right? Right. Okay, so once that's in there and I can get that top piece threaded all the way down, then I can just cinch these nuts down, which makes sense, right? Now all that stuff's nice and tight. Right. And now whenever I pull back and forth, I can feel that thing moving inside the housing. Right. Okay. Now once you've got this mounted solid to the axle, you're going to want to find the point on your steering linkage that you're connecting that has the proper amount of throw for the shuttle that doesn't pull on the cable or bottom it out too hard inside of the, the sensor housing and, okay. and damage your cable. Okay. Yep. So for hydraulic rams, you know, we, we've we've got a bunch of different hydraulic rams that are available. You've got six, eight, ten, whatever inches. I mean, how do you how do you mount this if you've got different ram lengths, right? Right. Well you're just gonna have to shuttle your steering back and forth and see where just where that works on your system okay. because they're all going to be different. Okay, so yeah. if I had a longer ram, I might have to actually bring it closer into the pivot point exactly. versus a, a shorter ram, I might be able to go farther out. But we want to try to utilize just about as much travel as we can without yep. bottoming out. Yep, and we, okay. can, and we can adjust it in a fine manner with the threads on either end and the location of the cable here. Okay, yep. that brings up a good point. I've got this extra little spot right here. If I just pull that if I just put that here and I just had this on the ram it would kind of be flopping around so what do I do with that yeah so you're gonna need a uh, you need a mounting tab right here that, okay. that, that's pretty solid what are the fine adjustments that are available if my tires are turned just a little bit okay yeah so uh, we've got a couple different fine adjustments that are on this particular system here one thing you want to make sure is that when you thread this rod into the plunger that you've got your jam nut nice and tight so over time it doesn't loosen up uh, but you're basically gonna assemble everything all together just like this you're going to put your cap on like we just showed a second ago but all of these threaded points right here can be moved back and forth to change the relationship between the cable and the plunger and that allows you to get a fine adjustment on your tires we've even got a little spot right here on the heim joint that you can thread in and out and you can get a fine adjustment right there and basically when it's all said and done when your tires are straight this little plunger log should be in between these two holes and neither of your sensors should be depressed. Sensor log is mounted. You can tell that the shuttle is centered under the, the sensor holes. You can install the sensors. There's no need to over tighten these. They've got a sealing uh, rubber washer under there. Just hand tight works just fine on those. So we designed this thing to mount close to the center line of the axle and you can see how we have ours mounted right here. Uh, it basically is right behind the axle truss and the link bars and everything else to keep it nice and protected. You can see that basically where the two sensors are, you would have to have one heck of a lucky rock to hit those things. The cable is designed to be attached to the sensor log over here and it mounts all the way over here to the arm. And in this particular situation, we have it mounted so that the tie rod is in the back side of the cable. So if you're backing up and you hit a tree or something like that, it's going to protect the cable from getting smashed. Now you do have to worry about maybe a rock or something flinging off the front tire coming in the perfect trajectory to hit this cable and tear it up. And if you're in that situation where you're a racer or something like that, we'd, uh, we'd suggest that you build some type of a guard over this portion. The cool thing about the system also is if this cable gets messed up, it doesn't stop the rear steer from working. It just stops the self-centering function. So you can still turn left and right, no problem. One of our most common calls after guys get to this point in their installation is that they fire up the vehicle, they, they, they arm the, the self-centering system, and the, the tires want to twitch back and forth just a little bit. Okay. How, how do we solve that? Yeah, so um, if you could picture inside of this cylinder right here, you've got the little uh, shuttle or the log inside here that's moving back and forth, and it's going to trigger these two sensors. And the amount of uh, engagement that the sensors have into the log changes their vertical relationship to that little shuttle. So if your sensors are, are screwed in too far and the uh, amount that they're um, screwed into is basically touching the log, it's gonna bounce back and forth really, really fast. And the simple way to fix this is just to take a quarter turn 
off of each one and then try it. And if it still doesn't work, take another quarter turn. And eventually it'll get to the point where it'll stop doing that. So what do I need to lube this thing with? Man, just a little bit of WD-40, something like that does the trick. You don't want to put too much grease or anything inside this thing because this thing does seal up airtight with air with O-rings inside everywhere. And if you put too much, it can actually hydrolock the shuttle inside and that'll wreck your cable really quickly. Okay, and then what about like rusting or anything like that? Do I have to worry about rusting on the inside? Not at all. Both of these parts are 304 stainless. You're not gonna have any issues with that. So I just got this thing installed in my buggy and as soon as I turned this thing on, it went to full lock one direction. What in the world's going on? Yep, that one's pretty easy. The shuttle, the, the brain box here just thinks that the sensors are in different spots, so you've got them plugged in the wrong spot. You'll just take your, take your plugs and switch them, solve that problem every time. Jake, we get a lot of questions about the performance specifications on the electric over hydraulic unit. Okay. Uh, guys, the performance of this thing has been just uh, amazing over the years. We've had a lot of success out of these things. All of your top drivers in Southern Rock Racing and a lot of the mud guys are using this. I mean, you can go through the top 10 in Southern Rock Racing and literally all of them are using this kit. You know, it's, uh, it works extremely well. It's extremely robust. Um, it has enough pressure and speed to keep up with that high performance type racing thing. Um, but we send these things out at 1,000 PSI, uh, which might be a little bit low for the guys who are doing some rock crawling. Um, you can actually go right here on the side of the pump and you can loosen up this nut right here and you can tighten this down and it'll actually increase the pressure of the pump. Now there's trade-offs of that, obviously. If you take your pump and you increase the pressure, uh, it decreases the life of the pump, theoretically. Right. Uh, what it's designed to do is have 15% of uh, duty cycle in a 10 minute period, which means that you would get 1.5 um, minutes of operation in a 10 minute period. So it's very similar to a welder or something like that. But man, if you were in a situation where you were going left and right and left and right, it's, it's literally would be using this thing to the point where your thumb would be going numb to go to an, a minute and a half. I mean, that's like crazy. Every time you go back to center and the pump's not being used or your hand's off the joystick and the pump's not being used or you're in manual mode and it's just sitting there and the pump's not being used, you're slowly increasing that 10 minute span again and you're, and you're decreasing that amount of duty cycle. So uh, it actually doesn't ever hit that duty cycle. Now, if you go up to 2000, you decrease 2000 PSI, you decrease the duty cycle down to 10% which still is in a situation where you're, you're just probably not gonna get there. That's a lot of rear steer movement. Most of the guys that we sell these things to don't have any problems with them. A thousand PSI seems to work really well. It saves all the components. It makes them last a really long time. If you can use the thousand PSI and it works well for you, absolutely keep it where it was at. If you're struggling with it, you can bump it up. You'd want to put a hydraulic testing uh, um, pressure tester on the side. Right. You'd want to go all the way to full lock and then whenever you hit full lock, you'll see the pressure go up and that is your pressure relief hitting and you can adjust the pressure there. Jake, I found a sweet spot to mount this thing. It's under the seat of my buggy and I cannot get to the 710 cap. All right, we actually have this happen very often and uh, the solution's pretty simple. Uh, all you have to do is unscrew this cap and you're gonna screw in just a uh, half inch NPT fitting right here. And then you go from there to a separate reservoir. And there's actually reasons why we do that on our buggies regardless. We go ahead and put a second reservoir. And the reason is, is if you were to take this and fill it all the way up with fluid to the very, very top, as the fluid got warm, it would start to expand and that extra pressure in there can blow out the seals. So you wanna make sure you leave a little bit of air in the system. Now, the problem with that is if you get on some crazy steep angle, you could actually suck air into the pump and then put it into your hydraulic lines and obviously air is compressible and your tires will start moving around. So what we suggest is to take a fitting, screw it into this spot right here and then run a second reservoir up here on the top. That'll make sure that this motor is completely submerged in fluid no matter what angle you're at. I'm trying to decide between the electric over hydraulic and the engine driven, and I'm just wondering, you know, how big is this and whether or not I can fit it in my buggy. Gotcha. So this thing, you're gonna need to leave about 16 inches total for the pump and the motor together. Uh, these are, you know, each end of it's five, six inches in diameter. And then the major uh, height is a little under eight inches tall. Can I put it in any orientation? You can if you do the remote reservoir modification we talked about earlier. The biggest concern is that you keep the pickup and the tank full of oil. Guys, we have these installed on all of our turnkey buggies. We've got them installed on racers that are putting their buggies on the podium every week, and we've got them on mud trucks. We've got them on competition rock crawlers. We've got them on recreational vehicles. 
If you follow the instructions that we've given you in this video and install this properly, it will give you years of reliable service.